Sunday, June the 18th. So, as I'm sure you can uh, all see, beard's gone. Um, yeah, that was last week. Uh, that's why I didn't vlog last week, because I thought it looked a little bit strange. So it's like the first time in like eight years I think I've got rid of it. I didn't think it was that much of a big deal, and then people in work said to me, oh, you should have vlogged it. Uh, so I might be doing that in another eight years. The weather's been fine. In the UK, if you don't know, if you don't live in the UK, once the weather is fine, you go out. Doesn't matter what you do, you just go out. Even if it's just to stand and look at some pigeons, you just go out. And that's pretty much what I've been doing. Uh, so I just went out and I forgot my camera and I'm without a mobile phone. So, because uh, obviously I smashed a pixel, that's a couple of vlogs ago. Yeah, smashed it. Front screen is fine, no problem. Rear, smashed. I was using my iPhone 5C and then last week as I was cycling home it decided it was just going to break and it's been on charge for over 28, 24, 48 hours and uh, nothing, nothing at all, it won't even turn on, uh, so that's dead. Um, so I'm currently without a mobile phone. A couple of vlogs ago I did a vlog on uh, how to vlog, a couple of tips that I thought was uh, may have been helpful. Um, been viewed quite a few times, so cheers everyone, thanks for that. Um, I hope they've helped you. Um, so I thought today, what else can I do? Well, I thought there's been a lot of um, a lot of talk uh, on, on camera kit. Which cameras to use, should you use your mobile phone, uh, and exactly how to start vlogging. So I thought today I'd put together and show you some of my cameras that I use and some of my equipment that I use. It might give you some sort of an idea if you're thinking about vlogging. So here we go. So camera wise, right. <laughs> the camera I'm currently using, hang on, um, let me switch cameras. This is my Sony DSC camera. This is my main vlogging camera. This is what I use pretty much all the time, apart from now. Uh, so <laughs> a couple of features about it. It's got a Zeiss lens, quite a good, uh, I think it's 30 times optical zoom. It's got quite a good reach in it as well. But if I turn it round, this is the most important bit. This is the bit that I really wanted, was the fact that it's got a 180 degree swi swivelable display. And uh, if I just turn this on, so let's give it a second. It takes a second for it to turn itself on. There we go. And then if I am to just turn this over, it gives you quite a lot of good, it gives you quite a display. But you've got a few things there. I mean, I've customised this so I can see exactly what I want to see. But if I then turn it around, you'll notice that it goes from being upside down to being the right way. So it actually uses a little accelerometer inside the display and turns it the right way around. Hello, so that uh, you can see everything properly. So more often than not, I'm looking inside this lens here. But every now and again, I do look up and check inside this display just to see if everything's working okay, if I'm sitting in the right angle, if there's enough light, etc, etc. A couple of downsides about this camera. The audio is not great. It's got a little, um, it's got a little mic built into it, obviously. Um, but... The downside is that you can't attach an external audio source, so that is a, quite a downside. Uh, this was pretty much, this isn't the cheapest camera with the tiltable screen, but this is the, the cheapest camera with the best camera quality with the tiltable screen uh, that I was able to find. Unfortunately, as I say, it doesn't have an external microphone option, and sometimes the zoom is quite slow. So if you can see there, when I'm pushing the zoom, so if I just push it see it can take quite a while for the zoom to actually work because obviously this is the optical zoom and it's having to move then the digital zoom as well after that so it is, the zoom is quite slow but still when it does zoom in it's very very good picture quality standalone picture quality is very good as well this camera does come with wi-fi and nfc as well so if you wanted to use both options you can do you can attach it to, to your router or you can attach it to a wi-fi hard disk and you can sync uh, videos and photos back and forth that way if you prefer to a um, couple of other little things about this as well obviously it's got a little camera holder in the back there a little stand holder rather now I've, i use that just with a, a a cheapy little uh, gorilla stand sort of knockoff um, but I am going to be looking to buying a better gorilla stand an actual gorilla stand uh, as you can see it's got quite a few um, good amount of uh, buttons not too many and they're all uh, just right about where your thumb sits as well so you can also alter the brightness as you go so all in all 
this is my standard vlogging camera and I'm really happy with it. I've been using it for a few months now. I've sort of committed to buying it. It wasn't that cheap. But yeah, all in all, very, very good. Okay, let's go and have a little look at some others. As everybody knows, when it worked, I used my Pixel uh, a few times. I've really got to get this repaired. Um, I used my Pixel quite a few times as well, same as my Nexus 5X. I had quite a few phones here, so I thought I would get rid of, the, of the, the Nexus 5X. I'll get the Pixel repaired and I'd use my iPhone 5C in between. The iPhone 5C broke, the Nexus went a, a couple of days before the, the iPhone 5C broke and now my Pixel is still broken. So, <laughs> all in all, things didn't work out quite well. But I've used my Pixel, used my 5C, and to be honest with you, I just find it, you know, pretty good just for spur of the moment sort of five second vlogs or whatever. Ever. that's that's pretty good um, the audio was very good on the 5c but I much preferred the quality of the video on the 5x the 5c video looked a little bit how can I put it it looked fiddled with it didn't look as if it was natural it looked as if it was somehow enhanced and I didn't like that I just like things to be sort of quite natural looking um, so other cameras which have propped up which have come up in this vlog so I sometimes use my Mobius. Now I use this for recording all my quadcopter videos so I kind of strap it to my head, look a little bit like an idiot and just uh, record. And to be honest though, it's alright. It's got a wide angle lens, lens, it's 1080p, it's okay, the audio is very good. Um, there are better cameras out there but this one does me because it's light and the battery lasts a very long time and it's got a 64, I think it's either... 32! <laughs> 32 gig SD card in it, not 64. That's very good. I also use my run cam. Now this is a remote controlled run cam. But it's, it's, it, in itself it isn't remote controlled but it's very light. So it can go on top of remote control vehicles, remote control quadcopters, cars and, and the like. Um, again, very good wide angle lens, uh, 1080p. All in all, quite a good camera. Audio uh, is not so good. But to be honest with this one, I just want to get good fit, good video footage, not necessarily audio. My DB Power, this is kind of like a GoPro clone. I bought it because it was extremely cheap and it was Wi-Fi. And to be honest, again, very good. Camera quality, the, vo the uh, audio quality is a little bit muffled, but there are worse, um, but I'm sure there are worse mics out there. Um, uh, video quality is very good. Uh, 1080 and it is proper 1080p. I'll put links in the description to all of these cameras should you want to check them out. So that's the DB Power as well. That's been used a couple of times in the vlog. And also the one that I was given by um, Dido by a couple of months ago. Uh, this little guy as well. This is good for underwater. I find that even though these two are both underwater cameras because they come with a little sort of enclosure that these sit in. These two guys are actually some of the best that I've got for underwater footage. Um, and lastly, my new camera, the one that you just saw. Well, say new, I've had it for about a fortnight, three weeks. The one that you just saw me filming with, that is the Mate Cam. This is a 4K sort of GoPro, again, GoPro clone. Everything's a GoPro clone. Um, and it cost about £60, I think. Again, uh, link in the description there for you. Um, very good. I use it on the bike to cycle back and forth. Battery's about two and a half hours. My commute back, uh, commute to work is about an hour and 15. Uh, so I get plenty of battery life out of that. And it's currently got a 64 gig card in it. Uh, this one is 64. And yeah, it's all, it's, it's very good. It's my only 4K camera that I've got. And I've got to say, I've, I find it really, really good. So I'll check that like, little guy out as well. So I've got quite a few cameras. I like buying cameras. Um, I like experimenting with cameras. I have a great use for different different kinds of cameras, whether it be just on the quadcopters or trying them out in the vlog or something. Um, but the whole range of cameras, all you pretty much need to start a vlog is a camera of, I would say, better audio quality than video quality. I am happy to watch quite bad video quality as long as the audio is good. If the audio is bad, it doesn't matter how good the picture is, I'm not interested. Uh, so I, uh, just a personal preference of mine, I know it's probably going to be loads of people out there that disagree with that statement. Honestly, I really do much prefer to have much better audio than I do video. Uh, so this, what's going on with this? Well, it's going to grow back. I'm going to keep it just to hide all of this because I, I don't like this. And then once it's hidden, job done, we can carry on then. So um, yeah, so until uh, next time, 